Hello everybody and welcome back to Northwest Craftsman. That funny looking hand plane that you saw at the beginning of the video is my brand new rabbit plane. During this video we're going to go through and talk about how to set up the rabbit plane, what the rabbit plane is used for, and what the differences are between a rabbit plane and a shoulder plane. Alrighty, let's get started. Alrighty, one of my favorite things is getting tools. Let's see what it looks like. First things first, we're gonna be doing a modified version of the hand plane maintenance. If you have not seen that video yet, go ahead and check it out right here. Uh, but we're gonna go through and clean, maintain, and then protect, and there's really only one step out of each of these that we're going to do. So the first step is to clean, and when you get a brand new hand plane, what you wanna try and do is strip off all of the excess grime that is from the uh, manufacturing process. And in this case, because it's an entirely cast body, you get a lot of machined oils on it. And so we wanna strip those off and then protect it with uh, some paste wax. But first, we're gonna strip this off with some mineral spirits. <laughs> As I took all of this apart, I thought it would be a good idea to go through the anatomy of this particular hand plane and show you the differences between this one and other hand planes. Like most hand planes, or realistically like all hand planes, you've got the body and the handle and that's pretty standard. You've also got the blade and the lever cap iron right here, or the lever cap here, and then all the mounting hardware that goes along with that. What's different about this particular hand plane is this group right here. This group is your fence and the fence is, the fence is used to keep your uh, plane a certain distance away from the workpiece, which adjusts the uh, size of that shelf on there. This one is also different because it has two different positions that you can put your cutting blade in, one in the front for a bull nose and one in the back for a regular use. And the nice thing about this back piece, but what is different about it, normally when you see a lever like this on a plane, it means that you can adjust its uh, angle as it's pointed down towards your workpiece. This one is not doing that. This one actually adjusts your depth. And so you see this little tiny lever right here that moves back and forth. That interfaces with one of these notches. So you get coarse depth right here and then you get fine depth adjustment here. So the next step in maintaining your hand plane or initializing your hand plane is to go ahead and maintain it. Now, because this does not have any rust spots on it to start with, all we need to do is sharpen our blade. So we're gonna take the factory sharp blade here, which seems pretty sharp, but let's go ahead and give it a try. So per the usual, the blade coming from the factory is not actually all that sharp. It's not even close to shaving sharp. It doesn't even grab on my arm. So we're gonna go ahead and put, run them through our diamond plates and get it back up to shaving sharp. So as I'm getting this ready, I'll quickly walk you guys through what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run it through a 300 grit, 600 grit, and 1200 grit, and then finish it off with my leather strop. This is a technique that I learned from Paul Sellers, and I highly recommend you go check out the content on his channel. But I'm just gonna do a quick time lapse of this process right here of us putting a new edge on this, matching roughly the same angle that is there. Coming up, I will be putting out a video that goes through the specifics of this process. So if you're interested in that, and if you think diamond plates, you're questioning whether or not diamond plates are worth your investment, I highly recommend them, and I highly recommend the video when we get it posted. All right, here we go. So there's the four before, here's the after. You can see it on the blade itself and let's see how it shaves. There we go. 
Sharp enough for hair, sharp enough for wood. Let's get it put back together. After sharpening your blade and doing any of the other maintenance you need to do, which in the case of a new plane, there is no other new maintenance we need to do, we'll go ahead and move on to the final step, which is to protect. And the way that we're going to protect it is by putting some paste wax across all of the different faces right here. And you wanna make sure that this is non-silicone paste wax. And then we're gonna put some machine oil or three-in-one oil on each one of the different mechanical components so that the threads stay nice and greased. After all that is done, the very last step is to reassemble everything. Okay, so here it is all finished and all ready to go. Now you can kind of see all the different parts as they're coming together. So right here, you've got your depth gauge and your depth gauge is used for when you're working on a piece and you've already started cutting part of your shoulder. You can mark how deep you want to go on there before you stop. Your fence, which is this guy along the bottom, sits up against the edge of your workpiece here and it controls how much of a shoulder you're actually going to form on your part or how much of a rebate or a rabbit you form on your actual workpiece. So then finally to talk about the differences between a rabbit plane, a rebate plane, and a shoulder plane. So everything that I found online said that a rabbit plane, R-A-B-B-E-T, and a rebate plane, R-E-B-A-T-E, -E, a rabbit plane and a rebate plane are exactly the same thing, just called by different names. However, a shoulder plane is theoretically something different, though from a functional standpoint, they're almost exactly the same thing. When I went on to Fine Woodworking's, uh, Fine Woodworking Magazine's forum, nobody could agree on whether, whether or not one would work for the other's purpose. Uh, the other thing to know is that a fence, like I have on mine, this guy right, uh, this guy right here, this doesn't get on every single plane. And in fact, most rebate planes or rabbit planes will not have them. And you end up using your fingers as the uh, fence itself. Because once you get one or two passes in, you're all good to go and you don't have to worry about it drifting one direction or the other. The primary feature of both a rabbit plane, re rabbit plane rebate plane, and a shoulder plane is the fact that your blade comes right here to the edge, unlike a normal hand plane where you end up getting this lip all the way, this kind of like safety edge all the way through. So you cannot get all the way up to the edge of a perpendicular face where you have a 90 degree corner right there. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today on Northwest Craftsman. I really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like the content that we're producing and you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and think about subscribing to the channel. If you are already subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for joining our community. I love seeing the comments from you guys. I love seeing what's going on in your life and the different projects that you're working on as well. If you like this video, think about giving it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about what I did in this video or things that I didn't explain very well, uh, go ahead and leave something in the comment section down below and I can get back to you guys and answer that. Uh, we also have a Facebook and a, an Instagram if you'd like to follow us there. And I'm trying something new with this video. I'm gonna post it on Saturday morning instead of Sunday morning. So by the time you guys are watching this video, I hope that you have an excellent and productive rest of your weekend. Thanks again for joining guys. I really appreciate it. Have a good one.